In the process of working on the rotary table, I realized I should upgrade the hardware that holds down my vise. This table has half-inch T-slots, which means the T-nuts I'm using are threaded for a 3 8 hole. It only gives a little bit with these bolts, only gives a little bit on the vise to hold it in place. It's not an ideal situation. Going to a half-inch bolt, you end up with a T-nut that looks like that. That came with the mill when I got it, and I don't use it. But what I want to do is to make a T-bolt that has an integrated stud in it that's half-inch that will fit up through the slot, lock into the vise, and I can put a bigger nut on it. The other thing I want to do is actually make some keys for the bottom of the vise. These are the keys that came with it, but these are 5 8 so they don't fit in the slots. So I need one that's 5 8 on the top, half inch on the bottom. Uh, these are hardened, which is a nice touch, but makes it much harder for me to machine them down. And with the counter bore in there, not going to give me much room once I machine that down to half inch. So what I'm going to do is make one from scratch, put a countersink in there for a flathead screw so that I can put it in there and actually lo lock the vise into the slots a little better. So let me go grab my junk and we'll get into this. I've got this old axle. It's got a nice square section here that's about, about an inch and a sixteenth. The T-nuts only need to be about seven eighths, so that gives me some room to work with. Should be able to clean that up pretty nicely. I think I'm going to get, try to get four of them out of this section. That'll give me two for the vise and then two for the rotary table. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up with the needle scaler, wire brush, cut it down, and get to work on it. That looks like a piece of metal to me. There's still some scale down in some of these pits, but once we start machining it, it should probably mostly machine out. If not, I don't, I'm not too worried about it. So let's throw that on the mill and start squaring it up. For now, I'm just going to take about 30 thousandths off of each side, get it squared up as best I can, and then go back and see where the pits are before I machine it to final size. I'm sure you've seen enough videos on squaring stock that I don't need to show you another one, so I just did that off camera. And then made some marks on here where I want to cut it and where the various pieces are going to get machined out just to keep myself straight. It looks like this one will have a couple little pits that will stay on there, but that just adds some character. I also realized that I can make these wider. I can make them about an inch wide, which didn't quite get that wide on the stock when I machined it down to clean it up, but it's still wider than this T-nut is anyway. So I think that'll be pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut it and then start machining out the sides so to make actually make it a T-nut. Probably have to relieve out a little bit. I'm going to side mill the bottom of these pieces to get my zero and then move over and cut the rest of it down to size. I'll do that for each one, then flip them over and do the other side of each one. On to the other side, I want a setup that's repeatable. I don't have a vice stop, and I also want it to be repeatable off of the inside corner of this, because there is a little bit of variation from one to the other. So I just stuck a parallel in there, tapped it up against it, got it nice and tight. I'm going to edge find that parallel right there. That'll give me the inside edge there. And then I can just move over the width of the cutter, and that will give me the lip on the other side. All right, we're going to plan B. Cut it, measure it, adjust, cut again. That's more what we're going for. Next, I want to cut about five thou clearance on each side of the bottom of this for clearance in the T-slot. Just needs to be about half an inch, so I'm just going to run through there with a half-inch end mill. I just want to keep the main body of this 
as close to half an inch as I can so I can turn it on the lathe, but it needs to be a little bit smaller where it actually fits through the T-slot so it doesn't bind up. Quick test fit. Slides right in, nice. The one last thing I want to do with these on the mill is to cut the shank down to just over half an inch so I have less material to remove when I put it on the lathe. This is the result, these are about half an inch, give or take. So we'll chuck them up in the lathe and make them round. To finish it up, I've got a parting blade with a little radius ground into it that I'm going to use just to round out that corner. Slow this down. I almost forgot the chamfer on here. And this is the part of the video where if I had a quick change gearbox, I'd be really tempted to single point this. But since I don't, and I don't want to mess with change gears, I'm just going to do it with a die. And of course, no tooling project would be complete without a little cold blue action. So for making the keys for the bottom of the vise, I dug around the scrap bin, found this, whatever this is. I'm going, I'm going to make these together, get the shape of them, then cut them apart, drill the holes in them. I'm just taking the thickness of this down to 5 eighths. Key that came with the vice is 626. Spot on 626. Luckily, there's a slot right here hanging off the table where I can test fit it. And that is a pretty nice fit. So now I just need to cut it down so it'll fit in the T slots.
pretty happy with that fit. Since I'm still in the same setup, I know this edge of the cutter is right on this side. So if I go over half the cutter plus half the stock, that puts me right on center to drill my holes. So that's going to be two, four, six. Let's talk counter bores for a second here. I had originally said I was going to use a flathead screw and countersink the hole, but that's what that would look like. It basically takes up the entire width of it, so that ain't going to work. For a quarter inch cap screw, the normal counter bore size is 7 sixteenths, which would look like a hole like that, which also isn't going to work, or at least isn't going to leave a whole lot of room there. But the head on this is actually just under 3 8 And I think in this case I can get away with just a 3 8 counter bore. Fits down in there nicely. I think that's going to work. Uh, we'll find out later, but I'm going to try that for now. And if I have to, I'll come back and make that hole bigger. So the last thing I want to do is just knock this in half. I'm just going to use a slitting saw, touch off on the top, and go half the stock plus half the slitting saw down. Just barely kissing it there. Perfect. Short, nice, nice. Eight. These vice keys are a really tight fit. You're gonna have to work them in like that. Get that hole lined up, tap it down in there. When I cut them, I did leave them slightly longer on one side, so that I know that's the side that points toward each other. That way, if there is any asymmetry side to side, they'll still be lined up the right way. Really nice fit on those cap screws and that counter bore. I like to put the vise right, right about there, cover up that chunk of the table that's missing. There's ever so slight amount of play side to side. Should be good for getting it trammed in just right. Now all that's left to do is tram it in and on to the next project.